Hi, my name is Matthew McLean, and I'm the Degasys Product Manager for Volvo Construction Equipment. Today, we're going to talk about our in-field design software, which is a little more advanced than our 2D program, but it's not quite 3D either. We're going to talk about how to use it and what job profiles are useful for using it with. Come along with me, and we'll show you how to use it. So Volvo Excavators usually come standard with a 2D package called Dig Assist Start. That allows you to do a flat trench or a slope trench. Now when you want to upgrade to be using satellite signals, we sell a package called Infield Design. It includes the satellite hardware and a new software package. When you have that installed, you'll touch the hard hat, you'll go from Quick Mode, which was Dig Assist Start, and you'll switch over to Project Mode, which is the software that comes with Infield Design. That's going to give you access to satellite signals and give you the ability to add different types of tasks. So the first couple, level and slope, very similar to 2D work, but now you can actually have multiple layers. So if you have a flat trench, you can have the bottom of the trench, a layer for your sand, a layer for gravel, cheap soil, expensive topsoil. There's your five layers. Slope is going to be the same thing, but at an angle. Line is a function where in addition to the line telling you how far down to dig, you're going to have a line on the screen, it'll be blue, and it's going to show your perfect line for the next mile and a half. And anytime you veer to the left or right, you're going to get an indication on the screen that you've actually gone too far left or right and you need to square up the trench you're about to dig. When you upgrade the machine to have the GNS software and hardware, you also get a new drawing package. That package is called Infield Design. When you go into it, you have two styles of drawing for different plans you want to make. The first one is called Profile. For Profile, imagine you're actually in the ditch and you're drawing the shape of the ditch you want to dig. When you get to the next screen, you're going to draw the path that that ditch will follow. The other option you have is called Plan. For Plan, imagine that somebody gave you a blueprint, say for a house foundation. You're going to draw the corners, the walls, all that information onto the screen, and then you're going to put the bucket on the ground and say the first corner of my project is here and the garage is over that way. The nice thing, because you are connected to satellite equipment now, is you can move on to other tasks and come back. It will remember where you placed it. So if you draw a house basement, you place it on the ground, you can go off, do a septic tank, do the irrigation, and come back and start back on the house because it'll remember exactly where you place that plan on the ground. What I'm going to show you next is how to use the line function. So once you're in project mode, you touch down at the bottom to say you want to add a new task, hit the plus symbol. When your four bore box comes up, you select line. Once you go there, you're going to start off by putting the bucket on the ground and you're going to say where you're going to be starting from. So for this example, I'm going to choose the middle tooth. I hit the set button. You have the option of using the attachment or the compass. With the two satellite antennas, you're going to have a built-in compass and you can actually put the bucket out there, select compass. By default, it's going to choose the angle here that is a straight line from where you're at right now. That said, if you have a particular compass direction you want to use, you can go into here and customize what it is. I'm going to use the one that's a straight line from where I'm at. I hit set. Now I customize the line. I can touch the angle icon and say that I want, say, a 2% slope. I want it coming up toward me. I hit set and now I can add my layers. Again, I can have up to five layers. All I have to do is hit the plus symbol to add layers. I can touch the triangles to change the depth. If I have something in particular I want to type in, I tap on the calculator icon and I can say, for example, 4.25 feet. I set that in, set it. This is a summary. Everything I just put into the machine, it's a file like any other computer file you worked with. You hit save, and we take a look at the views. I'm going to change my view to add a top view. And from there, I'm going to pinch in, just like you would with any photograph on a phone, and I've got the blue line. If I want to show how far I am left or right, I go into my top bar, and I customize my settings. 
I'll touch the gear icon. I'm going to keep it at two pieces of information, but I'm going to change from pitch and roll, and I'm going to select line, and I'll have it versus my selected two. Now I've got target to depth, and over here it's going to tell me where I am left to right. I have the left tooth selected, so it shows two feet off, but if I tap down here and go to middle tooth, I'm pretty much square with that perfect path that I want to follow. From here on out, when I'm digging, anytime I go to the left or right of that perfect spot, it'll let me know that I'm not square and that I need to square up my tracks or my bucket to make sure I've got a perfect path going out for that trench. There's two functions to line. One is where you use the compass, but you can also use the machine to draw the line for you. So I'm going to give you an example of that. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to tell the machine that I want to create a new task. I hit the plus symbol. I get my list of available tasks. I'm going to select the line. Now, from this one, I'm going to start with where the middle tooth is right now. I select it, I hit set. Next, I'm going to say I'm going to use the bucket to establish the line going in that direction. So I choose attachment. Now I physically have to move the bucket. So I pick it up, I move it further out, put the bucket back on the ground, and then I choose a tooth. For a straight line, I'm going to choose the exact same tooth I began with. I hit set. Now we get into some of the specifics. So I defined a line, the computer is sensitive enough to know that I had a slight angle between those two points. So if I want a flat trench, I should customize that here, or if I have a specific slope, I'll enter it. I could either touch the triangles, or in this case, I'm just gonna make it a 2% positive slope. I put that in there, I go to set, I'm going to drop this down three feet, Negative, as soon as I get my negative here, negative, negative. Okay, I've got that. I hit plus, add a couple layers, hit set. This is a summary, it's a computer file, save your file. On the screen, I have this mark, but it's going to make more sense when I go to a top view. So I'm going to go into my view selector, I'm going to add top, exit back out. And then on my screen, here's my top view of my excavator. Now I've got my blue line. And any time I go to the left or right, it's going to let me know that I'm not digging that perfect straight line anymore. The next feature we're going to talk about is profile. So again, you go down to the bottom line to create a new task. You touch the plus symbol. When this comes up, you select in field design. You have profile and plan. We're going to select profile and we're going to draw the profile. You do have a library to choose from and anything you draw, you can add to that library. But for now, we're going to draw a fresh one. You get essentially graph paper. You draw the shape of the profile you're going to add. You can customize these dimensions. You can customize it either by dragging or by going down here and changing the dimensions you want. Whatever you want to do, you can have a straight line at the angle, or I could touch down here, and it's more like rise over run, your X and your Y. Once you have the trench the way you want it, you hit the set button. You're going to draw the path that you want this to follow. So you pick a side, it could be the middle, but you pick a dot to represent when you draw the path, it's relative to that point. I hit set. If everything is staked out, you could draw with the machine and just put the bucket on the machine and click stakes as you go. More likely somebody's giving you perhaps a napkin with all the shapes on it, and you're going to copy that onto the screen by drawing the path. This one will be relatively simple. I'm going to start down here. I'm going to make a hundred foot length. So I touch my dimension, make that 100 feet. Like a phone, if I want to change shapes, I pinch in, I drag it down. I'm going to give this a dog leg off to the right. We're going to make that 80 feet. It looks like it's already there. I hit OK, and I'm going to straighten this off, go that direction. Again, 
you can either type things in or drag. That one's 80 feet. I'm going to make it 100. I hit OK. Now I've got the path. I've got the shape of my trench. I've got the path it's going to follow. I hit the set button. Now we need to place it on the ground. So I select two points on my shape and I'm going to put these on the ground. I select, I hit set. Now, what I typically do is I put the bucket on the ground in one spot and move my bucket to another, but you just need two points that are three feet apart. For this example, I'm going to send the path this direction and I'm just going to choose the opposite sides of the bucket. I'm going to anchor my point with the left tooth and I'm going to set the direction by selecting the right tooth. I go set. I can add multiple layers if I need them. For this exercise, I don't, so I'll choose set again. This is my file. I'm going to save my file. Now on the views, I'm going to change the view so I have a better idea of what I'm about to dig. So I go into my view selector. I'm going to turn off side and front, and I'm going to select top and 3D. Now that I've got my top and 3D views selected, they're going to show up. I can pinch these down. I can spin my three-dimensional view anywhere I want. If it's not where I want, I can always recenter my view. My light bar is here. It will give me an indication of how close I am to the target surface I'm trying to dig. Anytime the bucket is over the green, I will have a dimension up there telling me how far down I need to dig. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a plan within field design. So again, we go down to the task bar at the bottom. We select that we're going to add a new task. When the four box comes up, we choose infield design. We choose plan. Now, if cones or stakes were already on the job site, you can reach out and touch those individual ones and draw your shape that way. If somebody simply gave you a drawing and said, this is what I want my house to look like, you're going to draw it on the screen. So at this point, you're going to have a grid and we're going to add the dimensions of our house. The first corner of my house and I come over, I change the wall. I could either have dragged it or I can type it in. I'll make that 50 foot wall. I pinch in to get the entire house on one screen. I'm going to come down. Let's make that about 40 foot. I'm going to pinch in some more. I'm going to come over. Square that up. Again, you can just touch. I'm going to come up and I'm going to come over. You can customize the dimensions all you want. You can customize your length, your angle, and your depth, or I can change my dimensioning scheme to X, Y, and Z. That's the most common way people draw. You get the shape you want, and there you're going to place it on the ground. I hit set. I choose two points. On the shape here, I choose two individual points. Here I'm going to choose the garage, one corner of the garage, and the far corner of the garage. I hit set. If I had the machine on, I would move the bucket and put it on those two spots, but I don't have to. I just need to choose two points that are more than three feet apart. So I'm going to choose the left tooth of the bucket to anchor the corner of the garage, and I'll choose my right tooth to say that's the direction of the garage. I'm going to hit set, and if I want everything to be one specific depth, I hit the plus symbol, and I can use the calculator icon and type in, say, 10 feet deep for a basement. From here, set, this is a file, save your file. And now on my views, I'm going to blow these up a little bit and move them around. So this is my top view of the house. Anytime the bucket teeth are physically over the green, up here, it's going to tell me how far down to dig. The 3D view, I can drag, change my position, squeeze in, squeeze out. You have a lot of things you can customize on here. And if you ever need to get a view larger to focus on it, just double tap on the screen. Now I've got the whole view here. I can speed it up. That's going to tell me how far down to dig and the light bar will let me know when I'm getting close. That's all you really need to do any plan in infield design. Here's a quick tip. 
if you draw something and you've placed it on the ground and then you realize you've made a mistake, you can edit this on the fly. You go down to the info tab here and it's going to show you the file that you were just on. Use the back arrow to get to the screen where the mistake was made. Maybe it was the actual size of the house you had. So maybe I want the garage to be wider so I can touch this dot, make my garage wider, square that up, hit set, and just go back through. I had two points, that's already done. Hit set, 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 and save. So that's an easy way to edit your plan right there on the fly. When you're using infield design, and especially when you're using plan and profile, you need to be connected not only to satellites, but also a correction signal. So that's part of the feature of the infield design upgrade. To access your GNSS or your satellite communications, you're going to swipe down from the top, you're going to touch this gear over here, and in the menu that pops up, you look for GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. Once you tap that, you're going to see the different methods that you can get a correction signal for your satellites. The first one is Radio RTK. This machine is built with an M21 smart receiver, and that's going to connect to a base station. If you're using that, you simply toggle that on, and you're going to put in, if it's a 900 megahertz, you're going to choose a channel. If you're using 400 megahertz base station, you're going to put in the frequency and put in the protocols that you're attempting to listen to. Sometimes you're going to be using a Trimble or a Top Gun or a Leica base station. In those cases, you'll most likely be using an external radio. So there, you'll toggle to external radio, and the radio will need to be programmed so that it talks to the base station on one side and our machine on the other. The other option you have is called Ntrip. Ntrip is still using base stations, but somebody else owns a collection of those. Say the state of Iowa. The Iowa DOT provides base stations all across the state. You'll need to go to the DOT's website, get a login, get a password, and you'll type that information in on this screen. On their website, they'll have a map, and it's going to be a list of mount points. The mount points are all the base stations that the state of Iowa currently has. You look at where you're at in the state of Iowa, select the one that's closest to you, you'll type that into the mount point, exit out of the screen, and now you're going to be connected to the state of Iowa space stations. So again, the three options you have, you can have the base station that Volvo sells and use the internal radio. If you're using a 400 megahertz base station by Trimble, Topcon, and Leica, you should still be able to use our internal radio. If you're using a 900 megahertz, you will definitely need to use the external radio. And if you're in a state or province that offers some kind of NTRIP service, you can subscribe to that and use NTRIP to get your correction signals. So, if you were going to do a large project with a number of tasks, say like a subdivision with a whole bunch of houses, you're going to set up what's called a global reference point. So the whole subdivision will be relative to this one point. Perhaps it's a manhole cover or the stake that the surveyor put in. So at the bottom of the screen, you're going to select to create a new project. You're going to hit the plus symbol and you have the choice of setting your UTM projections or you can simply touch an area. So I say I'm going to add it. I move the bucket and I put the bucket tooth on, example, that manhole cover or a stake that has the dimension on it. And I select the tooth that's actively touching it. For this example, I just touch the left tooth. I hit set. If I need to add an elevation, I can. Otherwise, I hit set. This is the summary. I hit save. And now everything is on the screen for me to start adding tasks. And I can have a level, slope, line or an infield design project like profile or plan.